Hi, my name is Erin Gazinski. I'm a software engineer. I specialize in 3D maths, geometric modeling, and real-time physics simulation. Today, I'd like to tell you about encryption. But you might think, what does encryption have to do with maths or engineering? And altogether, uh, isn't it something that only spies would need to use to get some information from a different company or a different country? Well, in fact, you don't need to be James Bond to, you, to encode. Uh, and you'd be surprised how often codes are used in our everyday life. But what does it really mean to encode? And what would you need to do it? And again, who besides spies would ever need it? Imagine you have a friend with whom you want to share a secret. Uh, and that friend has moved far away, so you need to write him a letter. But you also know that that friend has a sister who is really snoopy. And if she only gets a chance to read that message, she'll tell everyone. So what can you do? So you'll need to use a code or a cipher. Uh, a code is a secret language that can be only understood by people who know the key. And the key is the information on how to read that code. So let's say that the code you set up with your friend is the following. In your letters, in every word, every letter you write will be replaced by the letter that follows it in the alphabet. Uh, so when you write a word, uh, and you write one to large, uh, write letter H, you'll write I instead. Instead of E, you'll write F. Instead of L, you write M, and so on. So this kind of method is one of the simplest and most widely known. It's called Caesar cipher, as it was used by Julius Caesar, uh, a great military commander in ancient Rome, who used it for private correspondence. I'm sure many of you have heard about Morse code, uh, often used by sailors. So how does it actually work? Each letter or numeral is replaced by a series of dots or, or dashes, which correspond to short or long impulses. So for instance, if I want to say hi to you, I could just blink my eyes six times. That's because letter H is represented by four short blinks, and letter I is represented by two short blinks. The truth is, we're surrounded by codes everywhere, and they can be in the forms of gestures, colors, graphic signs, uh, lights or sounds. Of course, those codes help us to communicate rather than to hide or protect information. But still, in order to understand it, you have to know the key. So, for instance, if I start speaking Polish now, tylko ci z was, którzy ten język umieją, będą w stanie mnie zrozumieć. So how does it look like with new technologies? Do we need codes here? Well, think about using your phone, think about writing an email, or think about when your parents use a credit card. Uh, without encoding your, credit, your parents' credit card information, for instance, anyone could use it, and anyone could make payments without your parents' permission. At my work, I use a lot of codes too. I need them to communicate with the computer, but the fun part is actually I get to design how the computer will understand and interpret my, my codes. I don't have to use only mouse or keyboard, but I can interact with the computer making natural gestures with my hands and fingers. To visualize my movements, the computer needs a specific software, and that's also a series of codes. Now, I guess it's your turn to learn about codes and ciphers. Have a great class!